Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ift. Just had some chocolate. Feeling all cranked up for this show today. Uh, awesome show. Uh, Jim Lebonsky, uh, crazy guy who's done Murph every day for a year, even did it with COVID. Uh, had to talk to him. He's a police officer, first responder, uh, L1 cert, uh, uh, the CrossFit instructor, and he's also a, just a badass dude and a, a crazy, crazy workout fanatic, and he's a beast-like shape. Um, so I had him on today. Very fun talk. Uh, he just came out of COVID, as I did. I uh, hope none of you are getting it. If you did, hope you're surviving it and doing fine. Uh, we got a great show. Uh, Patreon. Uh, I reached out to everybody and said, hey, what's going on? You got to start like getting part of our, our Patreon. You got to be a part of it. Uh, and I realized there have been some people that I have neglected. And uh, uh, I want to reward everybody for uh, being part of the Patreon. You win a Myopux and a Leopard Club. Myopux is an electronic muscle stimulator. You use it. I used it during COVID to work on my back. I was getting back pains and it was really good at desensitizing. It's like a TENS unit. But it also, you can use it as a muscle stimulator too. Uh, to help rehab an injury. So I was using it on my back and it was great. It was making the pains go away. You also win a leopard paw. That's all you got to do is give $5 a month to this, uh, to this Patreon. You go to patreon.com slash wideCast podcast or wideCastpodcast.com slash Patreon. Donate $5 a month. You get in it. This week's winner, every week there's a winner. This week's winner is Stephen Rigby. Stephen, I want to thank you for your long, long support of the show and uh, always being there for us. Uh, I appreciate everybody who donates, everybody who listens, but especially Stephen Rigby. I want to thank you. And uh, all the people that have reached out to me, I am January 22nd. I'm shooting a special, special, which is an hour long special. I'm doing two shows at the Irvine Improv, January 22nd in Irvine. And I mentioned that I'm um, going to comp every CrossFitter that uh, is a Wadcast fan. And a bunch of you have reached out. I want to thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you at those shows. Anybody else, hurry up, get your name in. That's uh, like a week and a half from now. I would love to have you there. Uh, my live dates, where else I'll be? If you want to see me in, uh, I'm in Sun Valley coming up this week. Sun Valley at the RGOs Theater. Uh, next week, again, the 22nd of January, I'll be at the uh, Irvine Improv. Then I'm in Calgary, Canada, Yuck Yucks, the 28th, 29th of January. February. Here's where it is. Vancouver, the third through the sixth. I'll be at House of Comedy in Vancouver. And then uh, February uh, 17th, 18th, I'm in Rosemont, which is right outside of Chicago. I'm at Zany's in Rosemont. And then the 19th, which is a Saturday night, I'm at Zany's downtown. Then the 20th of February, that's a Sunday night. Joe Prano and I, Joe, my opener, we're going to be in Milwaukee at the uh, Improv in Milwaukee. And then the next weekend, the 25th, 26th, uh, I think it's 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, I will be in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, then I go to Costa Rica. Yeah, I'm going to Costa Rica. I'll be at the Ventura Comedy Club. I'll be at the Comedy Cellar, Las Vegas. I'm going to be in Steamboat Springs, Vail, Sunnyvale, all kinds of good places. So get your tickets at eddieift.com. Shows are selling out even through COVID. So uh, I don't know. Get your tickets. Come see me live. Join the Patreon, go to iTunes, rate, review, and comment. Enjoy this episode. And uh, is there anything else to tell you? I don't know. Dave Castro got fired. I, uh, I want to thank Dave Castro for all the hard work he's done. He, uh, I actually got to really like the guy. I find him incredible and think he did a really, really good job and created something fantastic. And I'm sorry to see him go. But onwards and upwards, I think he will uh, end up doing more great things with his life. So uh, I look forward to the next chapter. Uh, that's it. Let's get started with this episode. I think that's the fastest we've ever cranked through an intro. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this episode. And uh, I'm going to have a bunch coming out this week. So uh, enjoy. I'm here with uh, Jim Lebonsky, who I found you on... Uh, I don't know. You know how the Instagram feed just sends you stuff. Mine is set to psychopath <laughs> and it's like, find any psychos and uh, send them to me. <laughs> you are uh, someone that got into CrossFit 
at how long ago? Um, it's been about two years now. Um, right. right when right when the pandemic started, actually. And you jumped in with uh, with everything, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> sure did. Had you done CrossFit before at all? No, not at all. Um, when the gym shut down, I was like primarily doing like bodybuilding um, type stuff with like probably 45 minutes of cardio, like circuit training afterwards, just to stay fit for work. And then the gym shut down and I had a garage area that I cleared out and a gym owner that was nice enough to lend me like a barbell, um, a rower and like 205 pounds of weight and a couple dumbbells. And I was like, man, I got to stay fit for work. Um, and I got an hour and a half to a day to do it with kids. So what's the best way to do it? And I stumbled upon CrossFit and uh, just kind of just watched a bunch of YouTube videos and was like, oh man, this looks insane. And just started trying it out. And you're a police officer, so you have to stay yeah. fit for work. Yes, sir. Do they re- do, do, do all police, I, I think like when you become a police officer, you got to take a physical fitness exam and depending on where you are rank wise. But, uh, but there's pretty much like recert every year. Like you have to cert. No, oh. no, man. It's a, it's one of the things that really, really irritates me and frustrates me is that there's not a standard. Um, mm-hmm. You'll hear guys talk about it in the fire department too. I mean, it's good. We have a union, but the issue is um, people are lazy, you know that, and they don't want to be fit and they just want to skate by and they have the unions fight to make it say that it's unfair to have them have to be fit for duty, which is completely absurd. So (laughs) my department just took it away, which um, to me is like the most selfish thing you can ever do is, is not be fit for duty when you're going out there and you're possibly going to be somebody else's backup at that point, you're, you don't just care. You know, you're not just ruining it for yourself. You're putting other people's lives in jeopardy, not to mention the citizens you're supposed to be trying to protect. So kind of makes me sick, but there is no standard in most departments after you first get on. I've heard that from some firemen who tell me, I I think every area or every jurisdiction or whatever it is, is, is different, but I've Mm -hmm. heard some firemen tell me, you know, like, you know, like this is my partner. They're supposed to be able to like climb up a ladder, go through a window, grab my body, throw it over their shoulder. And if I get, you know, knocked unconscious and, and help me out of there. And, and they go, I look at my partner, like I'm going to die. Thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's insane. Um, I was lucky like the last eight years I've been on a, a unit that's 12 of my closest friends who all do somewhat of a variation of CrossFit of, you know, functional fitness um super fit guys it's like a pretty selective unit um so you get to choose the best of the best and those guys do have highly uh, they're, they're highly fit and uh, good at what they do. so for me it really isn't an issue but i do worry about you know a lot of people that are on the street that don't have backup fire department same same thing it's it's kind of insane to me did they uh did your partners and uh did are they the ones that introduced you to crossfit Um, actually, yeah, funny story. So one of my partners, um, one of the guys that I work with had started doing CrossFit and, um, now I'm man enough to admit it. I said, dude, that's, that's stupid. That shit's stupid. Like, why are you doing that? You're not going to get big. Like, you know, I wanted beach muscles, uh, all show, no, no go. And, um, my buddy started, started training at a local gym doing CrossFit, one of my partners. And, um, I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that shit, man. It, it sucks. But inside it's because I knew how hard it was and I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to go through the pain. Um, so one day we were in a foot chase that ended in a, in a fight. I won't go into too many details. And, and my buddy, Mike, was just handling himself without even getting winded. And me having at the time a six pack and big biceps, I was like winded. And I was like, oh, shit, this is an issue. Um, we need to get functionally fit because these beach muscles aren't going to do you shit on the job. Where are you? You in Virginia, Maryland, somewhere? Uh, D- DC area. Okay. DC area. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, so you jumped in when I say you jumped in with two feet. Uh, I just want to let the listeners know I found you because you've been doing Murph for, uh, you're on day. What? Today is day 223. I think it's crazy. I have to go back and look at the video the day before to remember what day I'm on. So 223 days in a row of Murph, you haven't missed. Yep. You, you, uh, uh, you're going to do 365. I'm going to do 366. 
366. Just yeah, because Memorial. So the day before Memorial Day will be 365, and then I'm gonna do 366. You know, Memorial Day Murph with my buddies at the gym. Okay, so let's let's start breaking this down. This isn't all I want to talk about, but yeah. uh, you've been doing it, and the the reason, like, there's a lot of people that have done it like for a month straight, or they do double Murph, or they do it for 24 hours for some reason. And it's a great workout and it's for a great cause. But for some reason, people take a liking to this. I like to do it once a year and that is it. I gave myself Bell's palsy from doing it once. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I consider it a pretty hard workout, especially with a vest on. It's ugly yeah. and it makes you hurt the next day. Has mm -hmm. the soreness ever worn off? Yeah, yeah. It, um, You're totally adapted. I I believe so. Yeah, I do have little naggy things that come up here and there, but I think it's hard to tell exactly. You know, I'm honest with people. It's like, hey, how are you? How are you not sore? I think I do. I built up a large tolerance for volume just because I have, I like training. Um, so when I do my regular programming before or after Murph, I can't say if it's definitely Murph or the other programming or just all of the volume that plays into me being like sore. Um, so I don't really know what causes it so, sometimes. So you'll do like a strength workout before or after it? Yeah, so I, I started following um, actually James Hobart um, in the CrossFit affiliate programming. My gym started it about six months ago. Um, and I wanted to do, you know, a strict program for six months. And when you go to your L1, they tell you, try following.com's workouts for, three months. And if you can RX that, like you're pretty legit. And I had never done it, you know, I've kind of cherry picked here and there. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to stick straight to basically dot com stuff for, for six months and, and see what happens. So yeah, there's usually a strength piece, one or two Metcons and then some accessory piece afterwards. And that's on, that's on dot com. Yeah. So CrossFit affiliate programming uh, started up about six months ago and typically it runs congruently with um dot coms like what they'll put out that day so like your affiliate will do basically dot coms work out that day um and then you know they do the three days on one day off so it's a little bit different like the affiliate will have five days on and then two days off but, uh, but who, yeah. who, who's who's programming your affiliate is this someone at your gym no it's it's uh it's cat crossfit affiliate programming oh okay i don't i yeah. I, didn't, I didn't i wasn't even familiar with that so yeah, and, and that's awesome. hobart does that yeah, Hobart and um, Maliola do it, and one other guy. I'm, I forget his name. I'm sorry. I'm not too versed with that. I just I know I've been talking to Hobart about it for a while, and it's it's pretty legit. And it's as a coach, it's awesome because I've never had a program that breaks down every single stimulus that should happen from the warm up to timing to breaks to like what you should be hitting percentage wise in your lifts, how it plays into the metcon, et cetera, et cetera. That's like great. Stroke rate. It's those amazing. Guys, yeah, those guys know their shit. Um, Crazy. That's. Uh, I'm always in like, where? What am I going to use as my programming? And I jump around too much. I'll stick with one sometimes for a couple months, but um, maybe yeah. I'll start doing that one. Uh, That's really good. What I was going to ask you though, do you look at it sometimes and you're like, oh my god, there's so many pull ups in this, or so many squats in this. I've got to, I've got to change this because. I'm going to be doing a hundred, you know, pull-ups or I'm going to be doing 300 squats. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it does, it does suck. Cause I got a little bit of a touch of rhabdo around. Um, I think it was, it was right before I started Murph actually. Um, I had done like a dry run on Murph um, just to see how fast I could do the rounds of Cindy. Um, and Cindy's like kind of my favorite workout anyways, to be honest with you. Like if I don't know what to do, I usually do Cindy. Um, so it was like May and there was a workout that had like the weirdest, like split cleans in it. Is that, you we never do those at all. Yeah. Dumbbell split cleans. It's a hero workout. And then like 50 pull-ups for like four rounds. It was like 200 pull-ups and 200 split cleans. And my arms just like locked up, never had that issue before. Yeah. And I was piss pissing to hit them Brown. Um, definitely okay. got a little touch of rhabdo. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to do like a lot of pulling that day, I can't do pull-ups or, and then I started Murph. I was like, okay, if I'm going to be doing a shit ton of pull-ups in Murph, like a hundred, I'm not going to kip in Murph or not going to kip in the workout that's programmed that day. And that's usually enough to keep, 
keep it to being not sore. As far as the squats and the push-ups go, like, yeah, it's going to make your regularly programmed Metcon a little bit harder. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just do the regularly programmed Metcon prior to doing Murph so that I can be as fresh as I can. And if time doesn't allow it, then it just kind of, it's going to be what it is. Just embrace the shitty part of the workout. It's going to hurt. Oh, I've never had rhabdo. I've, uh, I have had the thing where my biceps locked up where, yeah. uh, where like I was sleeping at night <clears throat> and I like slept with my arms bent. Mm -hmm. I couldn't straighten them out. They, they hurt. Like I woke up and my arms are still bent because they hurt so bad my biceps but that was after a workout this was in college somebody came to us and said i went to pit and somebody goes hey this is what the penn state football players are doing you ran a track there right yeah and um the penn state football players did this uh towel workout where you uh -huh. would do like resistance like the the guys pulling down you're pulling up and you would do yeah. one one rep but the rep was supposed to be like a 60 second rep or something yeah and I, I forget the exactness of it, but I just remember going, what the, what the fuck just <laughs> happened to me? I feel like I tore my biceps off my arms and yeah. it, was, it was brutal. Um, but I can't imagine, uh, I've noticed you don't do kipping pull-ups a lot though. Yeah. So, um, strict. I, yeah, I've been doing strict now. Um, I'll be straight up with you. A lot of it was because of people talking shit about the kipping pull-ups. And I was kind of like, look, dude, you obviously don't know shit about serious CrossFitters because every serious CrossFitter I know that can, that can do Murph, you know, hundred kipping can do a shit ton of strict pull-ups. Yeah. And typically whenever they train strength in this gym and most gyms and most serious CrossFitters, I know it's all strict pull-ups in your programming. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I, I don't. I don't get insecure about people giving me shit about kipping. I don't, I, I don't kip very often, but, uh, but the way I look at it, it's like, we know how to walk. We also know how to run. Yeah. So yeah. The, the kip is just, you're running. You're, good, you're doing a pull up where you're running and, yeah. uh, and you're moving fast. And that That's is good, the fastest way to get above the bar. And yeah. uh, it's just like a muscle up, you know, there are people yeah. that can like cycle muscle ups, like so fast. And it's like, you going to criticize them for kipping there? They're above right. the bar. Their whole body right. is above the bar. So right. that, that I just think that's ignorant when people criticize. Um, it's they, just they like, don't, you, they you don't know. know. Yeah. And, but it's funny. You got, you've been in CrossFit for two years. You're already an L1 cert. What happened? How long into yeah. it did you decide you were going to go get certified? Um. So let's see. I started doing it in my garage, like mm, March of 2020. I finally took the leap to go to my affiliate next to my house in like June. So I had been in for like a year. Um, and I'm just kind of one of those people that like, I'll watch a YouTube video and be like, that's how you do a muscle up. And I'll jump on the bar and I'll fuck around until I do a muscle up. And I'll be like, Oh shit. Okay. It's because I wasn't tight in my back kip or whatever, whatever works for me. I just kind of mess around with it till it works. And I'd had people coming up to me in the gym saying, Hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? And I was just kind of explaining it. And the, the owner was like, hey, man, you should consider getting your L1. It's really great for these reasons, um, even if you don't want to coach. And I was like, you know what? That I'll do that because I'd like to eventually coach, I think. But let's just go get the L1 first. So I got the L1 in June of last year. June of last year. Are you um, – how old are you? I'm 32. Okay. And your best Murph time so far? 3309. And that's unpartitioned or partitioned? That's partitioned. Uh, my best time unpartitioned is 39 something. Um, I think Makes it's 39. Makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's a completely different workout. Yeah. And I like, I like the partitioned workout because I'm starting, you know, I love doing zone two to kind of like push that lactic threshold back even more and more. Like Frazier talks about it a lot. I just read his book in like a day. It's amazing. Um, he talks about lactic threshold in that zone two workout for about 60 minutes. Um, for me, I'm not going to get there doing a partition workout. I'm not going to hit zone two, mm -hmm. you know, 70% heart rate if I'm not breaking it up just because it's a muscle fatigue workout at that point. Not saying it's not a badass workout, but it's just, it's a different workout. 
I like moving. If I'm going to do Merck for 365 days, I want to get a zone two workout out of it most of the time. Yeah. You don't think you could push it enough to get a zone two? Probably at this point. Uh, yeah, I, I bet I could. And then the other thing is longevity. Like, I don't know that doing 100, 200, 300 like that, just because of time under tension on each muscle, like you were talking about your bicep, that, that time it hurt. Um, that's from a lot of time under tension. When you partition it, you're able to kind of break it up a little bit. So the, the muscle's not completely contracted during that tire, like yeah. 10 minute span or whatever it takes you to do your strict pull-ups. So I just think for longevity and for me being able to do my other training, like it makes sense to partition it. Totally. And I also, I also like going fast. It's um, but I, I, I noticed you sometimes almost always add something into Murph though. Yeah. Yeah. So doesn't that change the stimulus a lot? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, um, explain, be, how you, explain how you add something. So like yesterday I did, um, 200 wall balls. So I saw Hunter had posted a, um, Talking about a Hunter, Mc, Hunter McIntyre. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, and I've been a big fan of him for a long time. All the stuff he does. Um, so I'm, I was, not, I was, I'm not a fan. I'm not. a. Fan. <laughs> I just want it to be out there and everybody to know I am not a fan of that guy in the least bit. <laughs> yeah, that dude's a beast, man. I, I think it's funny when people are like, hey, you should go after Hunter's or you got Hunter's record when like partitioning it when I posted the 3309. Mm -hmm. They're like, that beats Hunter's record. I'm like, dude, you have no clue. That man deadlifted 500 pounds and ran a sub five mile. Are you kidding me? Like, I can't touch that. That dude's a fucking animal. Yeah. So um, when I add something, like I saw Hunter posted um, the fastest way to do 100, I believe it's 100 wall balls, like 30, 25, or basically 5, 10, 20. The way he broke it down, it was really cool. And I was like, shit, man, I want to add 200 wall balls in a Murph. So I'll do my one mile run. And then every round I'd add 10 wall balls. So 20 rounds with 10 wall balls added. So I do five pull-ups, 10 wall balls, 10 push-ups, 15 squats for 20 rounds to get my 200 oh. wall balls. So like you looking squat, at that, squats and wall balls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, I was shocked at how hard the, um, the squats were because it sounds stupid, but when you do 223 days of 300 squats with a vest, like you're used to the stimulus. So anytime there's like a grain of sand in the treadmill, like you, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. or you understand, like you feel like the difference. Um, mm -hmm. So it was definitely like my hips were, were blown up probably around round 12, which was cool because I finally got like a, a muscle fatigue stimulus on, you know, pushing through the quad pain was, was something that I definitely wanted to achieve in that workout. That's ridiculous. I just, <laughs> I mean, aren't you worried about overuse injury? Um, honestly, man, no, like I've been training <laughs> I wouldn't, this is not something I would ever recommend <laughs> to any of my clients or any of the, yeah, I don't think anybody should do this ever. Yeah. And I say that too. I'm like super honest about it. I'm like, look, man, this is not optimal for, you know, gains, but that's not really what I'm after to be completely honest with you. And my, um, why I are you doing it? So it's kind of a long story. I haven't really come out you know, talk to anybody about it. Um, but I was, I was going through a lot of shit in my life, um, in May, uh, dealing with some shit. And I just, we were going to do Murph that day on Memorial day. And, and like I said, I had a rough couple of weeks. Um, not going to go into too much detail about it, but it's, it's just some high stress stuff. And, uh, for 45 minutes, I put the fucking pedal down and tried to really push the pace and my mind shut off for 45 minutes. And I was so happy during those 45 minutes um, that I kind of started chasing that high. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this for 30 days. For 30 days, I'm going to get about an hour where my mind completely shuts off. And I just focus on doing this workout in honor and Mike Murphy. And then the 30 days passed and I was like, shit, man, I, I really one, it opened up my mind to how much time I was wasting because when you have to do Murph and other programming and work a full-time job with two kids and coach, you know, I have two jobs, basically. It's like every single second has to be dialed in. Like I don't have time to sit around and bullshit doing this, that, and the other, which before I was taking, I didn't realize how much time I was leaving on the table. Um, so that kind of made me want to do it. And also, like I said, just shut my mind off for 45 minutes to an hour every single day really helped me mentally.
Yeah, I mean, when you lock in to Murph, you're locked in. There's no, there's no, uh, I mean, are there ever days where you're like, I'm just going to take it easy today? Yeah, there, there was a couple of days where I said that. And then after the first half mile, it's just kind of like, fuck it, let's get this thing done. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I used to love Cindy and love that part of it. Hey, I mentioned in the episode, uh, but I want to talk to you about how good sleep's the ultimate game changer. Uh, why? Uh, more than 30% of Americans struggle with sleep and temperature. It's one of the main causes of poor sleep. I know uh, I, I go to sleep and I need to be warm. I'm very cold at the end of the night. I'm very cold in the morning. But guess what? In the middle of the night, I get super hot. Not any longer because I've got eight sleep. That's right. I'm falling asleep in record time, faster than I ever have before, and it's all thanks to my 8 Sleep Pod Pro cover. It's not just a mattress. I do have the mattress, but the Pod Pro cover is all you really need. The Pod Pro cover by 8 Sleep is the most advanced solution on the market for thermoregulation. It pairs dynamic cooling and heating with biometric tracking. You can add the cover to any mattress, start sleeping as cool as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm finding my level, my number, I'm around like two. Uh, when I go to bed, sometimes I like it around six, but then I bring it down to two. Uh, it all does it for you. It's amazing. Like you just, I, I, I can't talk enough about eight sleep. Um, the temperature of the cover, it adjusts to each side. So like my wife has a side, I have a side, it goes differently. And it's based on your sleep stages, your biometrics, your bedroom temperature. It all reacts intelligently to create the optimal sleeping environment. What's the result? I'll tell you what the result. Eight sleep users fall asleep up to 32% faster, reduce sleep interruptions by 40%, and get overall more restful sleep. There's a lot of data here, a lot of numbers I just threw by. <coughs> They're all calculated. We live in that, <clears throat> excuse me, we live in those times now where you can take in this data and figure stuff out. You do it with your workout. Why aren't you going to do it with your sleep? Your sleep's probably more important than your workout and your nutrition. So, why don't you get a Pod Pro cover by Eight Sleep? It's so popular, it's garnered the attention from CEOs, high performers, top CrossFit athletes like Justin Medeiros, who was the 2000, uh, uh, 2021 fittest man in the world. Jason Hopper's using it, I just saw. They're all sleeping better with Eight Sleep, and you should too. So if you want to make the most of your uh, workouts and recovery, get the Eight Sleep. It's the ultimate game changer. Go to eightsleep.com slash wadcast that's e-i-g-h-t s-l-e-e-p dot com slash wadcast to check out the pod pro cover and save 150 dollars at checkout that's 150 dollars go to eight sleep e-i-g-h-t s-l-e-e-p dot com slash wadcast all right do that 150 bucks off and you will sleep better than you ever have before um and running used to be easy to me. It's now if you like said to me, you have to do Murph tomorrow, I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> die. Um, I'd like to get back into that shape that I don't even think twice about it. Um, yeah. Aren't but, you close uh, to Harvey? Don't you guys live close to each other? Yeah, yeah. He was here. Was it last night? Yeah, yeah. we went to dinner two nights ago. Get, up, get um, up in the mountain with that freak. I work out with him every once in a while. He's... uh he he goes too hard for me i uh <laughs> and then he doesn't get it and he tries to push me to like his level and it's all he does it's his living yeah. it's what he does yeah. for a living he has no children he has no wife he has no life he has no friends he has no uh <laughs> no i mean he just sits around and works out all day long and then he'll say to me get your fat ass up here and I'm like, dude, do you understand? I just got off an airplane. I had three shows last night. I came home. My wife gave me the kids. She went and took a nap. I had to, you know, then fix something and then pick something up. They're coming over to do a photo shoot. I've got, and he's like, yeah, me too. And I'm like, no, 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 not you too. And I'm like, you don't get it. He goes to bed every night at like, I don't know, like eight something. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then he gets up and he's like, all right, got the whole day. And he does this thing. And he's like, get the whole day to work out. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I went to bed at three in the morning because I was, you know, organizing my plane schedule. And then the kids had me up at six. Yeah. So, so what do you want me to do, Hunter? What workout do you yeah. want me to do and kill myself? <laughs> so 
once I get out of it, I don't know how old your kids are. Mine are two and six, but when I get out of that hole, uh, they're, they're, I, my kids are one and three. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're like a glutton <laughs> for punishment. This is the hardest yeah. part of child rearing. Like right now is like the hardest part. One and three. Yeah. You're yeah. Insane. My, my wife is fucking amazing. She's yeah. like unreal. She understood um, a long time ago that I take my fitness pretty serious for work. Um, for one, um, two, it's like mentally, I need it, man. I need that. I need to try to break myself every single day to, and it's probably some kind of mental disorder. I don't fucking know, but to try to break myself every day that I, I'm happy afterwards. You, it makes me feel good. Do you think it could be addiction issues? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I asked, I asked Froning about that once because it sounds like when you talk to him, he gets like a high off just talking about workouts. Same. He yeah, remembers, same. he'll tell you a workout he did six months ago and he'll be like, it was this, uh, the weight was this, we did four rounds, then we reduced the weight and we did six more rounds. And you're like, how do you remember this? And, yeah. and he gets really into it. And I said to him, like, what do you think it is? And he goes, I think that if it wasn't uh, fitness, it'd be something else. And so luckily it's something healthy and that, you know, I benefit from. That's what, so my wife was, she went out with a couple of her friends um, a couple nights ago. And the one girl said like, how do you put up with that shit? Like he's at the gym for three hours and then he coaches. Um, and she said that exactly. She said, if it wasn't that, if it wasn't fitness, it would be something else. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that it's at least something that benefits his and our life. That's where you get your dopamine. And uh, yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, you know, I, I get it. I have a thing like there'll be times where I'm angry or life just feels off and I don't know what it is. And then my wife will go, will, will you just go for a surf? Like go surf or go for a run or go, you know, mountain bike or something because something you're off. And yeah. I think we all need to do it physically. Uh, and if we don't, you, you can get into a funk and th that's where yeah. depression comes from and stuff like that. But um, now one, uh, we're both you and I, I think both, we probably got it close to the same time, but uh, you're just getting over COVID. Yeah. Uh, when'd you get it? So the 27th, two days after Christmas, um, I went into work that morning. So I did Murph on Sunday, felt fine. And then Monday morning I woke up and I, I had really a lot of volume that Sunday. I think I did devil press Murph. So I added a hundred devil presses into that. And I woke up and my back was sore and like, I don't get sore relative, like enough for me to notice. And I was like, man, I'm, I must have overdid it. I did a bunch of GHDs too. So I was like, man, I must have overdid it. Like this sucks. And then I started feeling like real bad. And then the fever crept up and I was like, Oh shit, something's not right. So I left work, went home, um, took a test and it came up negative and I'm not a doctor. I don't know shit about COVID. So I was like, Oh, I guess I just got a cold or something. Um, and my fever crept up to like one Oh two and it was like 5 PM. And I was like, fuck dude, Murph's got to get done. Like we're 210 days into this. I'm not giving this thing up over COVID. So uh, went out there and did Murph and it was terrible. You did Murph with a fever. Yeah, I was at 102 and the body aches are pretty, pretty terrible. Um, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I would bet that's yeah. pretty dangerous. Yeah, not, not, a, not a good idea. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. How long did it take you? I think it was like 51 or 52 minutes. Jeez, that's almost what I do in him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had 210 days into it. That's like that difference in 10 minutes from my standard, like 40 minutes. That's a lot easier for me now. Yeah. So, so did your fever crack after one day? Yeah. So the next morning, um, that Tuesday morning, so it was like, I think into like two or three in the morning I had a fever and then I woke up the next morning at like eight or nine and I felt 
fine. Like I still felt sore. I just felt like I did a, like a pretty hard workout. So I didn't do shit when I had it. I actually went for like a one mile walk the first night with my fever. I was like, I'm just going to go out and walk. And, and uh, the first night was bad. And then, then it wasn't bad at all. Uh, yeah. But the psychological effect of the constant talk of it and the constant talk of doctors and what can happen to you. And, you know, I, I called a couple of friends that are doctors and I was like, Hey, I got COVID, which I do. And they were like, get a pulse. They all said this, get a pulse oximeter and, and check your pulse, uh, check your uh, oxygen saturation. And yeah. if it goes below 90, you know, then, then, then give us a call. And so there's this, like, I'm sitting there taking my pulse and I'm like, why am I doing this? I don't feel that bad. Like <laughs> they're all in my head and the yeah. psychological effect of this, of like, did, am I that lottery winner that got the shit case that's going to end up in the hospital? And I'm double vaccinated. I didn't have my booster, but I was like, I should be fine. Yeah. But why am I sitting here with this paranoia <laughs> that they've induced this horrible paranoia? So I would never have considered a workout because of the paranoia. Were you, yeah. did it ever cross your mind that you might be doing something bad for your lungs or? No, I, I kind of, um, and this is not the right mindset to have, but I just kind of have this, like, um, this feeling of like, um, I just want to push against like a soft shit as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. um like anything like oh you need this rest day or covid's gonna not be good for your lungs i kind of like have this thing where i'm like fuck you i can push through anything um so it kind of fired me up to do murph with covid <laughs> so you did it for how long did you have covid symptoms oh uh, i'm still dealing with the man like i just did a 40 minute emom that i've done before and I was hawking up along the whole time. Like I'm still, my lungs are not a hundred percent. Like I, so just to kind of see where I was at, I had done workouts like benchmark workouts that I had recorded times at six months ago. when I think I was at peak shape and I went back and, and looked at my times and it was like stupid. I was adding like a minute or two to workouts that are like, you know, eight to 10 minute workouts was a minute or two is a lot. Um, and I just, I feel like my lung capacity is around 60% right now. It's slowly coming back though. Mm. Yeah, I but guess I had, for, I had the symptoms, <laughs> like the body aches and shit and the bad cough for probably about three days. And then I did that marathon assault bike Murph. And that was like, I feel like that was the day where I, I mentally got over it. Did you get any of the back pain? Yeah. Is that weird? Yeah. That was the it was, weirdest symptom I had. Yeah. It was like, it was like right on my Cossack's bone, almost like above it. Yep. And I was yep. like, what is this pain? And I, I, yeah. I've had that pain before of like, it's like a, uh, it's not like a tweak. It's like an overuse pain. And mm -hmm. it, it was just like drilling. Like there was nothing. I couldn't get in a comfortable position. And I was like, this isn't it's going away. Weird. And I didn't take it's it. super weird. I didn't take anything like Tylenol or I was yeah, in the mindset of like, uh, let the fever run its course. And like the fever's mm -hmm. there for a reason. But the headaches were just for 24 hours i had a full-on headache oh man yeah like couldn't get rid of and I, I, I never get headaches i was like this fucking sucks yeah uh, so i don't look i don't want it again uh mm. but i'm not afraid of it now yeah uh, it's uh it's it, but look I, there's a funny joke jimmy carr comedian jimmy carr has a great joke and uh he said does everybody think we overreacted in 2019 about um about coronavirus and the audience like all applause and he goes yeah the survivors always say that <laughs> and, that's a good fucking point man <laughs> and so i should be careful when i do say it was nothing it was nothing for me for yeah. me i'm one yeah. of the lucky ones there's many many lucky ones there mm -hmm. are but there are people that do not do yeah. well through this and we've lost lots of people for it. i have i have a super healthy friend who used to be on the show a bunch and he got it out of the blue. He wasn't vaccinated at the time because it was early on and he came so close to dying. And he Jeez. was just, you know, like in his, I think late thirties and just, you know, 
fit as a fiddle, worked out constantly, ate well. And his wife, yoga instructor, same thing with her. Like, it was just, it's just random. And, and that yeah. I think is the, I think that's the, uh, you know, the wild card that we're all afraid of. That like, yeah. did you get that one? I mean, you can get that with anything. You can get cancer, you yeah. can get heart disease, whatever it is. But yeah. so when you get hit with it, you're like, uh, do I have that? Do I have that case that's going to be the one? You know, it's like, yeah. I surf. Am, you know, I know there's sharks in the water, but am I going to be there that day that the shark decides to go look for the surfer? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I definitely get that. That's why I try not to be super insensitive to like the, what I went through. Cause I know that people can't control something, you know, you got fit guys that are marathon runners or whatever that are getting fucked up by it. So I try not to be like, fuck you. I did Murph with COVID yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's shit. Cause like it just affects people different. So I was lucky. Yeah. That that's kind of how I felt. I was like, Hey, if I <laughs> like, I can handle this if this is how it is, yeah. but, but I'm lucky that I wasn't one of them. Uh, yeah. I, th I think fitness does, does probably play a big role into it. I think uh, so too. I think, uh, you know, my doctor said I, I bounced through it one bad day and then two like recovery days. And, uh, my doctor's like, Hey, it's probably cause you're so healthy. You know, like you take care of your immune system. I know I got it because, uh, I don't drink really. I'll have like, I probably average two drinks a week. And yeah. uh, the day before I got it, I was at the Pitt uh, Michigan State bowl game. And yeah, I saw that. I, and I was with buddies and they were drinking all day. And I was just like, what the hell? I'll drink. And I drank yeah. all day and then went to the game, got back late, went to, um, went to sleep, slept three hours, got on a plane, and then went and did two shows the next night. And That'll do it. it. Yeah, I think it was just beating up my body. I I think it's sleep. I have uh, they're a sponsor of the show, but I love I have this eight sleep bed. Yeah, and the, the bed monitors all your heart rate variability and um, basically monitors your sleep patterns. It knows how many times you rolled over, how if you got out of bed, uh, what your heart rate variability is. So it knows when you're in REM deep sleep, um, and I get a sleep score. And every day I look at my sleep score and it, you know, sometimes I'm like, wow, I just slept eight and a half, nine hours. And I'll look at my sleep score and it's like 79%. And I'm like, what happened? Why did I? And then there are other nights I only get like six hours sleep and I'll have like a 90% sleep score. And I'm like, yeah. wow, I slept better. So, but it's, it, it's almost like I don't want to look at the numbers anymore because yep. 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 now now I know, like the, I literally know I had a shitty day yesterday and I look at my sleep score and it's like 57%. I'm like, oh, no wonder I had a shitty day. Yeah. And, and then I'll be like, oh, I had a great day. Oh, 90% sleep score. Yeah. And so the sleep score is, but it's having me work out. What did I do wrong that night? Did I play with my computer too much before I went to bed? Did I do this? Did I do that? Um, and I'm getting really good at dialing in the bed about the heat, like the bed will, you go to bed like hot and then it cools yeah. throughout the night. Yeah. And so you go to bed when you want to be warm and toasty, you fall asleep. But when most of us then get hot and want to get out of bed, it yeah. cools down for you. Oh, that's badass. Oh, it's amazing. And it's, it's like having a, a, a Tesla of a bed. Yeah. That's, that's, compared to that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. I didn't, I didn't ever realize like the body temperature thing. Me sleeping. And I, I think I was listening to your show with Hunter when he was talking about he was training somewhere. I don't remember where it was, um, but it was really hot out. And he was saying that he was like sleeping with like two liter frozen bottles between his legs to like cool his body down so that he could get sleep. And then I like kind of dove into like, um, you know, body temperature and sleeping and how much it really affected it. Like taking a cold shower before you go to bed yep. and having your room as cold as possible is like huge for getting deep sleep yeah well uh rich roll who was on the show years ago who people used to say was the fittest man in the world he lives right up the street from me and he's this uh vegan triathlete he's a great guy he we found out that he was sleeping on his roof of his <laughs> house. we're like what he's like yeah i sleep in a tent outside we're like why 
and the neighborhood we live in, it's Southern California and it's, you know, right by the beach, but we live in like a crater. So the cold ocean air comes up and goes down into this crater and swirls around and it gets really cold. Like it, there's ice on the road. I've seen snow. It's it, when I wake up in the morning, it's 30, it's 30 degrees, but it'll go up to like 80. Yeah. It'll that's, literally go from 30 to 80 in a day, but, that's crazy. and he's sleeping on his roof. And he had a mattress in the tent and uh, he said he'd just like to sleep cold. The other thing I heard about sleeping was you'll notice that when you're hot, you put your hands and your feet outside of your covers. And that actually cools you down the quickest. Like you, whenever you're hot, for some reason, our hands and our feet is what we put out to like, it's like almost like our body's thermoregulator. Mm -hmm. And and uh, but it's great because with this, this mattress that I use, um, cool. it down. yeah, it just cools down and it monitors me so it knows to cool down. That's awesome. It's freakish. Um, yeah, I need to get one of those. It's it's incredible. I found out about <laughs> Medeiros was using it. Yeah, um, I, heard, I listened to your show about that. And I just saw Hopper yesterday. Uh, Jason Hopper using one. Yeah, and that dude, that dude, I'm pulling for him hard, man. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's going to be an absolute stud coming up here soon. He is. He's just a little too tall. I feel like. I mean, but that didn't hurt, uh, uh, Daniel. And so, uh, well, Fikowski, Fikowski seemed like he could push through. You know that. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, look, it does, and they can, but they haven't. They haven't. Look, only one guy wins it all. But if you yeah. look, the guy that's won it all for the last like ten years has been in that five eight range. Five yeah. eight, five seven, five six. So, so even I remember when I talked to Froning about Hunter when Hunter was going to the games. He said to me, "How tall is he?" I said, "He's." Yeah. I said, "He's six two. And he goes, "Yeah, he's gonna have a hard time." And so I, man, I think well, Hunter got Hunter got fucked um, with the way that the programming worked. Yeah. Um, for that for that first games. Because that next competition is like right. his, he would have fucking destroyed that think, next workout. He, but, but that's what it should have could have. That's every CrossFitter could say that. Like, oh, that's I, in my wheelhouse. Um, yes. I will. think things were stacked against him on purpose going into that because I think people were annoyed that Hunter was there. Yeah, um, I don't know. I t I've talked to Castro about it off, off the record. And yeah. Castro's like, I don't have time to think about Hunter. Like that's that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, that's very true. I would have just really liked to seen him compete further in the weekend. Um, one, I'm a hunter guy. Two, it's like people. I don't know why people got their panties in a bunch about that because it's like, okay, there's a wild card. Who gives a shit? Like this guy doesn't do CrossFit programming. Like, and we're seeing who's the fittest. Like, why would you not want to see how another how another methodology Cause, plays cause out? Guys, because guys, guys devote their entire lives to this. It's all oh, they want God. to do. And here is a guy that didn't follow their rules. There are people that hate rule breakers. And uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you being a police officer don't hate them. I've always been a rule breaker. I was all for it. I would like to see it every year. I would like yeah, to see a card every year and see how they do. Um, me too. I, I just think it's interesting and adds an element to people are like, there's no place for that in a game. Do it in some other. No, and it's it's like, cool as shit. Yeah, it's great. I, um, think it's, I think it's awesome. Like you just said, like if you added a wild card every year, like let's take the, the Ironman champion and let's throw him in the CrossFit yeah, games if you want yeah. to, or the Spartan race champion. That's cool as shit. I'd be yeah. watching the hell out of that. Yeah. Give me, give me a year to train for it. Give them, uh, you know, like, let's let's see what a great athlete, what a great fit, how fit they are. I mean, because we could, <clears throat> and it's been done. These guys go into their sports all the time. Crossfitters try to do triathlons and uh -huh. crossfitters try to do, uh, and no one, no one makes a big deal about it. No one's right. like, oh my God. But that's because they're not giving Matt Frazier a spot at the Kona Ironman. Yeah. So I get, yeah. and trust me, if they did, and all those people that try to qualify around the world watch that happen. They'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? I went to 16 yeah. triathlons and tried to qualify for Kona. And this guy just gets to walk in because he's the best in some other sport. So normally I would a hundred percent agree with that argument when it comes to CrossFit, 
the new way it is, like with the regionals, I mean, not regionals, with semifinals and quarterfinals. Yeah, the, and they opened. Yeah, you got to do your time to get there. But the year Hunter went, there was so many people that were there that shouldn't have been there. Right. right. They couldn't squat snatch a 185 pound barbell yeah. or 205 pound barbell. So like your argument kind of goes out the window. You had people from national champions from little ass countries who couldn't squat snatch 185. Like, and then why did that, it matter that Hunter then, was there? And then you had that Greek guy that was all juiced up that could do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys doing your CBD? You should be doing your CBD. I'm doing my CBD. I love my CBD because I chose the right CBD. I got it from CBD MD. It rises above the competition. All right. Uh, here's the deal. CBD MD is the trusted leader in the CBD industry. It is, uh, you know, it's a superior product and it is, uh, all the top athletes. This is the one they're using. That's the one I use. I did all my research and I went, this is the one I want to use CBD MD. My wife likes it because she likes the lip balm and that's what she uses all the time. She won't give it to me. I needed it this week. She's like, no, it's my lip balm. Um, CBM, CBD MD is the leader in the CBD industry. It's committed to providing you with high quality CBD oil products to help you reach your goals. Whether your goal is recovery, uh, you're looking for pain relief, you're looking for relaxation, CBD can do it all. It's absolutely incredible stuff. Um, some of the top CrossFitters in the business are using it. People like Annie Thor's daughter, uh, Justin Medeiros. And there's two of the top CrossFitters in the world. If they're going to trust CBDMD to, to that for themselves and they're at the top level, don't you think you, where you are, it could be a little bit of help to you? I think so. So um, once you get out there, get yourself some tinctures, some topicals, some bath bombs. They got pet products. They got everything. You got to check out their website. And here's the good thing. If you want to get 30% off, you use our code. That's CBDMD. They're offering 30% off if you use WAD at checkout. Okay, that's CBDMD.com. CBDMD.com. Uh, promo code WAD. You're going to get 30% off your order of superior CBD oil products from CBDMD. It was fun to watch. I was there with them. I went with them. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. And it was fun to watch and see all the hate. I mean, it was uh, half the people were coming up to me. It was so polarizing. Half the people were like, I'm a huge fan. And then there are other guys just staring them down. Like that's crazy. And I was just like, this is hilarious. And I wanted them to excel for that reason. I mean, and yeah. I, just out of the randomness, I mean, like it wasn't going to happen, but it would have been so funny if he made it to like a final 10. I mean, people would have just been losing their losing their mind. mind. And, and, and I, I love that kind of shit. Yeah, I, I, I want chaos. So I, I'm not passionate about anything. I, I I shouldn't say that. I I I love stuff. I love to. I love my sports that I do. I love my family. But I'm not like it's the end all be all. I don't. I hold nothing sacred. Even comedy. I got in a huge fight with Stormy Daniels once about doing stand up comedy, and like saying she shouldn't be doing it because she was doing it in clubs. I was like, go oh, do it. Like do do meet and greets at the mall, like, or a, <laughs> club or a strip club, like, like leave the comedy club. It's kind of sacred to comedians. It's like a jazz club. And everybody came after me and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fight back with everybody. Cause I really don't care that much. Yeah. I was just like, so, but I did see, and I saw a lot of big name CrossFitters that were tapping in and having an opinion about it. And to this day, guys give me shit about it. Cause I'm friends with them. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? Yeah, that's it's an imaginary sport. All sport is imaginary. Like when people argue basketball, I'm like, it's 10 guys running up and down a wood floor, throwing a little round rubber ball through a net. Like yeah. you really like you're gonna devote your life to being angry. Dude, about this. That's such a good I said this to somebody the other day. We I, I stopped going to football games, like NFL games a while ago. Um, because I I was at a game, I was at a skins and Cowboys game. And there was, I looked around for a second and there was two fights that broke out next to me. And I was looking around and I was like, hold on a second. And I had a Jersey on right with somebody's name on the back of it. And I was like, hold on a second. We are grown men wearing another grown man's 
name on our back mm -hmm. fighting over them playing a game and they have no idea who the fuck we are yeah. and you're fist fighting over yeah. it and yeah. i love sports i love yeah. them yeah. i'm passionate about them but i'm not gonna get in a fist fight over a game that doesn't matter to me yeah yeah i've always said do you think uh do you think Antonio Brown on his weekend off wears your shirt, shirt Brad exactly. from Mexico? Yeah. He, yeah. he doesn't give a he doesn't give a fuck about no. you. You know no. when they say, and I get it because I have people that like my comedy. When they say we love our fans or we love we do it for the fans, sure you love the fans as a as a group, but as individuals, no, you don't, <laughs> and you don't care about them individually, so you shouldn't. When Ben Roethlisberger crashed his motorcycle and uh, he was, um, it was like after he won the Super Bowl, his first season, I think season. Yeah, two, I remember. Right, right before the season two, he crashed his motorcycle. He's in the hospital. There were people outside holding signs that said, get better, Ben. Our season depends on you. <laughs> and I was like, this is what you're, this is how you're going to identify yourself. Like, this is your identity. This is you. Yeah. And look, it's going on with politics. It's go I've look, I see it with sports with like soccer hooliganism and the nationalism. And, and all it is, is like, you're, you're subscribing to something. Maybe it's a political figure. You know, there's this like Trump mentality. Um, and it doesn't go on. Like people are like, people are like that with Biden. No, they're, no, they're not. Nobody, no Democrat like goes, I love Biden. They, they voted for him because it wasn't Trump. Like it was the, other, but that's how Trump got in. He was not Hillary and it was, but like to then become like, I've never looked at someone in a party and become like their guy or like, oh, I love him or her or whatever. I'm like, Ooh, I'm like, they're the elected yeah. official. They better do their job. And I hope they get knocked out in four years and someone else can come in and do a better job than them. Just like, yeah. but do I, do I buy their shirt or subscribe to them or the, and I like sport. I like to watch two teams play, but never would I ever fight with someone about it. Like yeah, people have to get over their shit. Yeah. No, I mean, I did that when I was like 19, 20 years old. And then I, you know, had a family and grew up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are people that don't. I grew up in no. Pittsburgh. Yeah. I grew up in Pittsburgh. The entire city, their identity revolves around the Pittsburgh Steelers and occasionally the Penguins. I went, so I'm a, I'm a Caps fan and I went to a playoff game of Caps at Pens um, in Pittsburgh. And I, I will say that is, I've been to a lot of away games. That was the nicest I've ever been treated at an away stadium. Ever. Oh, that's nice. That's nice to hear. I think Pittsburgh people are, are actually really good people. I was about to rip on them a little bit, but. Uh, no, I enjoyed it, man. They were, they were awesome. I had a guy buy me a beer. We, we chatted the whole time. That's how it should then, be. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent agree with you, but I've been to Philly a couple times and that was like, I had a, a 65 year old toothless woman, like, call me a cunt and throw a uh, that's philly bottle of beer that's me. philly philly are the I, was like, I i i'll say it and I, I used to do sports radio we talked about it all the time philly people and my father-in-law was a philadelphia eagle they're the worst human beings the philly <laughs> the philly fans it, there's something yeah. weird about like they're in the same state pittsburgh and philadelphia but they're two different types of people oh, and yeah. i i don't know what it is i don't know what it is about their area their people but it, this is a mass generalization, but I used to do sports radio back in like 2000 in New York city. And my partner was a guy named Sid Rosenberg. Who's on the fan now. And yeah. Sid was the biggest giants and Mets fan in the world. And his whole family, they had a van that was wrapped like a, like a, like a giant's van. And yeah. they drove their van down to Philly to go to a game. After the game, I saw him on Monday. I was like, how was it? He's like, how was it? He goes, uh, they spit on my dad's bald head. They called my mom a cunt and they flipped our van over. Yeah. They flipped their van over. Dude, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised one bit. I have like some horrible stories about Pittsburgh fans. I mean, Philly fans, sorry. And it's in, it's crazy to me how, how insane they are about their sports. Um, and most of the ones that I know kind of never grew up and are still like 
acting like they're 18, which is pretty funny. Yeah, it's um, really weird. Yeah, it's, it's, it is it's really weird. weird. But but people do the same thing in CrossFit and they just get uh -huh. so passionate about it. It becomes their identity. It becomes like their religion and they base their identity on it. And so when someone like Hunter comes around, it's it's a blow to their entire foundation of their being. And, and but I'm some, I, I think I'm pretty passionate about CrossFit. Like, I love it, man. Like I watch everything that there is to do about CrossFit. I listen to all the books. I listen to all the podcasts. I'm obsessed with it. And I have zero problem with somebody like Hunter coming in competing at the games that year. I, I don't understand why anybody would have an issue with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, a lot of people did. I'm still getting shit for it. Uh, that's crazy. Uh, uh, your, your accent sounds like you didn't grow up in uh, D.C., did you? Uh, I grew up right out, like, in Southern southern Maryland. Okay. You sound like you have a bit of a Berg accent, which is kind of like West Virginia, Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> might be the Polish in you. Dude, I just did one of those DNA tests, and it's crazy because my last name is Lebonski, but I had, like, 1% Polish. It was, like, 1.3% or something. That's hilarious. That's yeah, it. I didn't, but, it, but I'll bet it was all Eastern European. It was all like Scandinavian. Oh, really? And yeah, and it's really funny. Me and my wife have a joke because she did hers too, and we're like from the same area. And I was like, "Oh, great! Like I married my cousin." Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, the the Vikings did kind of go and rape and plunder and take over yeah. the world. So <laughs> yeah, they, they did. They, they spread their seed pretty. pretty <laughs> Um, I'd love to, I, I, before my mom passed, we wanted her to do it and she didn't, she, we didn't get a chance to have her do it, but I wanted to see what my mom was and my dad, you know, cause they're older. And then once they do it, you know, then I can kind of deduce where I am, but, yeah. uh, and especially cause my kids, my kids are so muddish. I mean, if, if they're everything that's in me and in my wife, like, which they are 50, 50, they're like. You know, it used to be like when I was growing up, it's like, oh, I'm English and or I'm Irish and German. And yeah. now my kids are like, we're English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, German, <laughs> Latvian, Native American, Chinese. Uh, there's like a hundred yeah. different things in them that I'm like, can we just start saying you're American? Like, <laughs> yeah, no like, doubt. What are you? You're American. Uh, yep. I, I also think they just lie at these places because <laughs> who's going to be able to call them out no one yeah they go hey you're puerto rican and you're also um uh you're from nigeria and you're that like, would no, be no, i'm not that would be hilarious <laughs> if uh somebody sitting around was like just making the decisions all right we're gonna fuck with this guy and just randomly yeah. throw throw some stuff out there and then they're gonna be questioning mom and dad that's a, that's a funny sketch. A bunch of guys smoking weed, sitting around going, all right, you're, uh, you're Ukrainian <laughs> and Pakistani, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think they do it with dogs too. Everybody yeah. thinks their dog's something. They get it back. They're like, well, I have a pit bull. <laughs> Dude. I, yeah. I got the DNA test on our dog too, because we were told my dog was a Chesapeake Bay retriever, which is like um, the shit. Mm -hmm. If you grew up over here. Um, cause we duck on a lot and they're like the okay. best retreating dogs ever. And, um, so we got this dog and I was like, dude, this is a steal. I'm like 24 years old, like barely making anything on the police department. A Chesapeake Bay retriever is like $1,800. And I was like, no way I'm paying, you know, two months of rent with, for a dog. Um, so we get this rescue and he looks just like a Chessie and he stops growing. And I'm like, what the fuck do we have here? So we did the test and he's like 18,000 different things. And <laughs> I went back and I tracked where he, where he came from, where he was adopted from to get to this other adoption agency that came here. And it was like Kentucky. And I called the sheriff's department that was down there. And I was like, Hey, I'm a cop here, here, here. I got a question for you. Like, cause I've been hearing these rumors. Um, like, are these places getting like dogs, like wild dogs? And he's like, Oh yeah, we got a lot of feral dogs down here, son. They go up to the mountain and they grab them and bring them down and they, they sell them for adoption. So I got a feral, a feral dog from Kentucky instead of a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. The best dogs are mutts anyways. Yeah, he's cool as shit. My, uh, I've got three dogs here and one of them's purebred and two of them are mutts. And the, uh, the one mutt is it's the most unbelievable dog in the world. I could go, hey, go make me breakfast. And she'd be like, oh, <laughs> refrigerator, get out the bacon. Like she's just, awesome. yeah, I've had her for 15 years and she's like, just like connects and 
That's and cool she's, shit. she's full on mutt. There's like people are like, what is she? I'm like, I don't know. She's I was making up. I always tell people <laughs> I make up. I make up names when I used to walk my dogs on the Venice boardwalk, the little one everybody loves and wants. They're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a Nepalese monk hound. Like, Nepalese <laughs> monk hound? like, yeah, they're known to climb Mount Everest. They're really good. And she's this big. I'm like, this dog itself has climbed Everest 13 times, like, 13 ascents all the way to the all the way to the summit. And I go, she did it four times without oxygen. And people on the Venice boardwalk are like, yeah. Uh, they're like they wear oxygen i'm like oh yeah they put a little mask on the dogs and they <laughs> and i'm like they put a little pack up i go sometimes they run out of water and the little dogs can carry water for them and get them up and down so like sometimes she'll make like four cents in the one ascent she'll go up and down and she's trained to know where camp four is she'll go from the top down to the bottom and people would just believe me and then i feel like going god i should like just i should just breed these dogs they're just mutts little serpents and then just sell them and all these yeah. idiots will buy them and uh you know i'll sell them for five thousand dollars and they'll be like i have this dog that climb mount everest uh, yeah yeah sherpa, sherpa dogs people are stupid i mean yeah. it, it never amazes uh, me how dumb people are yeah working in law enforcement for 10 years will will uh, make you realize that pretty quick what do you got in the background there are you selling something uh, no. So this is just, I'm at my gym right now. Oh, okay. I was like, what, what, what do you have for sale? Everybody's selling. Yeah. Something. I was like, what do you got? Um, yeah, I actually, I actually am. So I actually am starting to sell stuff. So I started to get into the merchandise, um, stuff about four months ago, uh -huh. just because I like, I have so many shorts and shit and it's like, I got tired of spending $80 for a pair of shorts. Um, yeah. so I like kind of dove deep into like figuring out um, what, how they make them, what materials they use, where they get them from, what makes these shorts different. So I just kind of started messing around with that. And I'm in the process of putting some of those out. You have your own line? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to call it? Murphware? Oh, no. Black, <laughs> black flag performance. It's just okay. named after my, my personal training LLC. Uh, so what are you going to do? Are you going to do anything special for your final Murph? Don't know man probably not i think i'm just gonna do a straight murph with the rest of the class and everybody that comes um just to be part of the gym thing try try will you do it partitioned or unpartitioned unpartitioned because i did it the first time unpartitioned so i'll do it unpartitioned wow um so uh do you think you what do you think you could do now at this point are you coming anywhere near hunter's record um so if i kipped uh -huh. yeah yeah, I think, think I, I think kipping unpartitioned, I, if I really pushed it, I could probably be at around 35, 36 minutes. Yeah. Um, but the thing is like, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. Like, I'm not going to beat Hunter on the run. You're, yeah. you're not going to do it. And what that's you, the thing that I told what, you. What about. are you doing? What are you doing your miles in? Um, if I really, I'm consistently now around eight to eight 30. But that's just like also like this many days in a row. I know when it's okay to push it. Um, when my buddy came in town and he's a freak, um, we had like 12 days of like workouts uh, program that we were going to do and just kind of beat each other up for 12 days because he's super fit, like regionals level athlete. Um, we did like 720 miles and we did it. That's the day we did it in 33 or nine and we weren't even really pushing it. Um, I think I could probably run like a seven to seven fifteen vested and um, be okay during the middle sections. Yeah. What? Uh, I forget where Hunter started. The push-ups are lo looked like where Hunter started to have a little bit of problems. And I've then, always been good at I've always been good at push-ups, and and it's, then his, his last mile, he he conked out at one point. Yeah, but I think it's like one of those things. Like people have said, like when they talk about um, going for the record, the thing that I go back to is like if you put Hunter and that person in the same gym, I don't think they're going to beat Hunter no. because of the runs. I think he'll mentally break you on the runs when he pulls out in front of you by that much. There's a guy, like, I forget the guy's name. There's a guy though that we think has broken Hunter's record. You know yeah. I, I know, I know there's like, you know, there's tons of home videos of people doing it and stuff, but 
unless you actually have like a judge there and somebody yeah. filming, like yeah. it's, it's different. It's very different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, tell me about it. And, and the, 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 uh, the knock to your psyche when they say no rep, no yeah. rep. And all of a sudden you have to repeat a couple reps. Yeah. That's a, that's a long time to keep a perfect standard. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. And like I was just doing the open last year, that was my first year doing the open. And there was the workout that was like a bunch of dumbbell snatches and burpee box jump overs. And I sold my soul on that workout because it was kind of a wheelhouse for me. And the last rep of the burpee box jump over, like I jumped with one foot instead of two and I got no repped. And just like the mental beat down of having yeah. to do one more. Bur and I had yeah. done like 75 to that point. Yeah. It took me like 25 seconds to like be like, <laughs> all right, let's get this last burpee over. So if you're in something like the middle of Murph and somebody no reps you like that can be like a, cause it's such like a flowy workout. Like you got to be in your groove the whole time. So a no rep will really throw you off. And like I said, I mean, yeah, I think if you put me in a box right now and you put a timer on it and give me Hunter's record and his pacing, like I could probably come close. But if you put me and Hunter together in a box <laughs> and do the workout, Hunter will mentally break you. Well, that's, run. that's also his specialty. He gets in people's, he gets in your. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, and I've, I've always said from the jump, like when people are like, you want to go for the world record? I was like, not really. Um, because I think whatever I can get, like, I don't know that it really, like for me to get the world record, I feel like I would have to go meet up with Hunter and we'd have to compete together in a gym against each other. I don't look it. It's for a good cause. Murph is for obviously to, to, uh, memorialize Mike Murphy, who, who yeah. gave his life for all of us and for all the servicemen out there. And I think it's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful thing. But And some people say, oh, it shouldn't be competed for. It shouldn't be this. It's all about the uh, you know memorialization. And I've heard that argument. And the truth is, I don't think there's a better way to memorialize it than to have yeah. people make it even bigger and talk about it and do it. Uh, you know, if there was a contest every year where they said, you know, I'd like it if one of the companies, you know, that, that that's uh, a veteran based company said, hey, we're going to put up, you know, uh, all this money for it. And half the money's going to go to the charity and half's going to go to the winner of it. And yeah, <clears throat> or the winner can donate their end of the charity to it. I'd like to see 10 guys go head to head on it. Hell yeah. Making an event because um, it's uh it's it's a great event it's really fun to watch and it's a benchmark that it's the one hero work that everyone does so um yeah i commend you on your your 365 day attempt i'm sure you're gonna make it you're wait what's the day right now it's like 220 223 i think um how many yeah, days, how many days do you wake up and you're like i just don't want to do it <laughs> um it goes in waves, man. Like yeah. some days I'll be like, so adding those variations, get me fired up. Yeah. So it, it, they make me want to do it more. Um, but going yeah. back to what, going Sorry. back to what you said about memorial, memorializing, you know, Mike Murphy and the whole point of the workout, it's really cool because you know, my, my following on TikTok is like 55,000 people or something. And every single video I put out, I get an, I get a question. What is Murph? And instead of being yeah. like, hey, Hey, dumbass, go to Google. I, I always say, Google Lieutenant Mike Murphy, learn his story, why we honor him, and the workout will follow. Yeah. And I've said that probably yeah. 20,000 times at this point. So I, I think that it's we're doing what we're supposed to be doing by memorializing him. Yeah, I think if there's somebody out there, a sponsor wants to put up the cash, we'll organize it. Let's do yeah. it. Uh, I'd like to see 10, 10 studs like, you know, you, the guys, there's a bunch of guys out there that are really good at it and see who there's can, a ton of guys that are really good at it, who can do it. It's one event, one day, one, you know, it'd be done in uh, 35 minutes. Be fun. My to money, my money's uh, on Hunter. Well, don't bet against him. I'd like to see you compete with him. Uh, uh, where can they find you? Where is your Instagram, your TikTok, all that? Um, on TikTok at Jim bro. Jim bro, 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 I gotta, I don't even know my handle. It's like Jim bro, bro broski, Jim bro, Bonsky. Jim I gotta look bro, at him. Jim bro. Wait, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, at that's it. Jim, J I M B O B R O S K I. So yep. check them out there. And uh, I wish you the best, dude. It was awesome talking. Thanks, to you. Yeah, dude. I had a good time. Let's do this again.